There are many young people today suffering from diseases that cause inflammation in their stomachs and intestines. With severe pains and upset stomachs, it can be difficult to live a normal life. But there is one young Swedish scientist who may be on her way to a solution. Jenny Mjösberg is studying one of the body's most complex systems, the immune system. Our immune system actually exists to help us fight against various diseases and protect our bodies. But sometimes the immune system goes awry and creates unnecessary inflammation, which can make us seriously ill. Jenny's research team is studying a newly discovered part of the immune system found in the intestines that may be the key to stopping these inflammations. Our research is, is aimed at understanding more about the immune system in the intestines and what happens that when something goes wrong, like in inflammatory bowel disease. And the ultimate goal is, of course, to, to find new treatment strategies and find uh, curing treatments uh, for these diseases. At the Karolinska Hospital in Huddinge, Sweden, they are seeing patients who have problems with stomach and intestinal inflammation. Hey, it's Panos. Hey, welcome to us. One of these patients is 19-year-old Panos, who, two years ago, was diagnosed with an intestinal disease called Crohn's disease. I had to stop training. I, I lost a lot of weight. I was very tired for a long time. Uh, I fell behind a lot in school, so I, I lost a whole year. Honestly, it was just a lot of change to deal with at one time. Since then, Panos has been receiving medication to alleviate the symptoms of the disease, but he still sometimes needs to return to the hospital. This time, it is to extract new tissue samples. Jenny works together with the clinic at the hospital. She gets a small sample of intestinal tissue. The ability to conduct research directly on human specimens makes Jenny's research very unique. Okay, good. This, this looks really good. Yeah. Most of the research that is done today on inflammatory bowel diseases is, is done on mice, um, but it's not certain that the disease mechanisms are the same in mice and humans, and that's why it's so important to do research on, on human material. Now the process begins where Jenny's team studies how these immune cells are affecting inflammation in the intestines. These cells are called ILC cells, the immune system is largely made up of white blood cells within the bloodstream. But a few years ago, scientists discovered these new ILC cells in the stomach and intestines. Their task is to respond when harmful bacteria or viruses attack the stomach. These immune cells then quickly send out signals to initiate a defense against the attack. Sometimes, however, these ILC cells become overactive. As a result, they create a severe inflammation that harms the body instead of helping it. The um, exaggerated activity of ILC cells is uh, something that we don't know so much about and that we would like to know much more about. It could be caused by uh, genetic uh, problems. It could also be caused by treatment, uh, by, for example, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs or antibiotics. To study the ILC cells, Jenny's team cleans the intestinal samples with the help of enzymes. But this alone is not enough. Even more advanced technology is needed in order to sort out the cells. So now we are adding antibodies uh, which uh, attach to the surface of the cells. And uh, that is uh, for us to be able to analyze these cells with flow cytometry later. Jenny brings the sample to a nearby laboratory. This facility is under high security because the equipment she'll be using is used for a number of different types of research involving the immune system. This advanced instrument, called a flow cytometer, uses a laser to recognize antibodies and in doing so can sort out the cells she is looking for. The results are collected in the test tubes below. Jenny takes the test tubes containing purely ILC cells back to the lab where her team can now begin their experiments. 
We stimulate the cells with inflammatory proteins uh, to simulate an inflammation. And then we can also block this stimulation by adding uh, different possible drugs, uh, similar to what could be done in patients in the future. And we do this to affect the protein secretion from these cells. The proteins that ILC cells produce are the signals that influence inflammation. Different substances trigger the cells to build different types of proteins. The team is now trying to find drugs that will cause these cells to produce proteins that can reduce inflammation, which by inference could stop intestinal diseases like Crohn's. The immune system is very advanced and we don't really know yet what the results from influencing the ILC cells will be. But if Jenny's team succeeds, there is a good chance that they will not only have solved Crohn's disease, but perhaps several other common diseases as well. The functions of uh, ILC cells is very similar in different parts of the body. So if we could understand more about ILC cells, then we could potentially treat in a better way other diseases such as psoriasis and rheumatoid arthritis. Panos's disease sometimes relapses. It can be almost good and then it gets worse again. Right now, it's worse and things can feel pretty hopeless. Panos's wish is that with the help of this new research, he will one day be completely healthy. I think it would be simply amazing. Um, it, would, it would lift this huge weight off my shoulders and just let me live my life to the fullest, uh, just as I imagined it before I got sick. There is still a lot of research remaining for Jenny's team here at the Karolinska Institute. But Jenny believes that her findings will one day help Panos and others who suffer from similar diseases. We hope to be able to stop these diseases at a very early stage. So not only to treat the symptoms, but actually the very early stages of inflammation uh, before the patient has started to suffer.